All right, then. So we've seen what Green's theorem is. We've seen an example or two. But why is Green's theorem? Why is it true? Is it just one of those things that you got to memorize because it's on the exam? Or is there some deeper meaning to it? A meaning deep enough that it is worth digging into the idea of the proof. Well, what do you think? Yes, of course, it's really deep. It's really important. We're going to go over the proof, not a complete proof, but we're going to cover the core idea behind it to get at why Green Serum is true. Let's start with a simple rectangular domain. Let's say D goes from A to B along the x-axis and C to D along the y-axis. Let's show the Green Serum is true here on this domain. I'm going to start with the right-hand side with that double integral of partial q partial x minus partial p partial y. I'm going to integrate that with respect to area over this rectangle, and I'm going to do so piece by piece. I'm going to break it up into two terms. The first term, the integral of partial q partial x, I'm going to integrate with respect to x first, then y. As x goes from a to b, y goes from c to d. Then the second term, the partial of p with respect to y, I'm going to integrate that with respect to y first, and then with respect to x. Here we're using the Fubini theorem in a clever way in order to do these integrals. Because when I look at that first term and I integrate partial q partial x dx, I get simply q. And then I evaluate that as x goes from a to b, and then integrate that with respect to y. For the second term, I have the partial of p with respect to y. When I integrate that with respect to y, ah, well, I get p evaluated as y goes from c to d. And we see here the key idea in this proof. It's the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. Here, lift it up into this two-dimensional setting. Now, the only thing that's left to do is this evaluation with some careful rearrangement. Q, as x goes from a to b, gives me Q of b comma y minus Q of a comma y. Integrating that with respect to y as y goes from c to d gives me a pair of path integrals along these vertical paths, the sides of the rectangle going up and down. With that second term, I get the integral of p of x comma d minus p of x comma c. Integrating that with respect to x as x goes from a to b gives me a pair of path integrals going horizontally to the left and to the right. And if you're careful with your minus signs, you can see that what you really get is the integral of q dy plus p dx along this oriented boundary of the rectangle D. That is why Green's theorem is true on a rectangular domain in the plane. And we see it's really just the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. OK, but that's just the start. What do we do with a more general domain, something all curvy and stuff like that? Well, for a reasonable domain, what we're going to do is fill it up with rectangles. I put some, some bigger rectangles in, and then I get some smaller rectangles, and then lots of really small rectangles, and I keep going, and I've got a whole bunch of them at the boundary. Well, does this help? Let's think about it. If we have Green's theorem true on every single one of these rectangles, and let's say we take two of them and put them together so that they align or abut then that means that if I look at the integrals around the boundaries, these two boundaries have some overlap. There's going to be an edge on which it's the same thing. But if you're careful, you can see that the orientations of those two pieces are opposite. That means that the line integrals along the region of overlap cancel out. And it's as if you can just take the integral along the boundary of the union of these rectangles. And so we see that the hard part of Green's theorem is how do you approach some sort of limit where we fill up a domain with simple pieces on which we know it's true? Now, we're not going to do all the details of that. That idea of taking limits of spaces and paths gets 
very deep, very quickly, and it's not even necessarily the best way to do the details of the proof of Green's theorem, but for getting at the heart of why it's true. If you understand the proof on a rectangle, if you understand that it's really the fundamental theorem of integral calculus, then you've got the main idea.